Hi, today I'm going to walk you through creating and utilizing a policy within SecureAuth. So as you can see, I'm logged into the admin console of SecureAuth. And within this admin console, I've already defined all of the different data stores I'm connecting to. So my different SQL databases, my different Active Directory environments, my Azure environments, and anything else where my users reside. I've also globally configured all my different multi-factor authentication methods, you know, FIDO2 WebAuthn, push to accept, and all the different MFA options that I want to take advantage of as an organization. So what I need to do now is create some policies. So I'm going to go into the policy section here. And you see I've got a few already created that are tied to different applications and resources. But what I want to do here is create a new policy for some new resources I've got coming on board. So I click Add New Policy. I'm going to give it a name. And what I'm going to do is start taking advantage of all the different adaptive authentication layers that SecureAuth provides to build out this policy. So by default, I've already got the GeoVelocity set up saying skip MFA if that user has not traveled faster than a jet airplane, otherwise I'm going to prompt. Over here, I'm going to add more rules. First, I'll start with uh, country. For instance, I will skip MFA if the user is coming from the United States and we'll say Canada. And I'm going to add this to the policy. I also want to add a new rule because my user should not be coming in from certain countries that I will block access if they are coming from the Ukraine, for example. So I've added a couple of rules. I can move these around. I've got threat services built into SecureAuth, so I can say if the user's threat service or threat level is at a medium, then I'm going to prompt for MFA. And I'm going to say if the user risk is high, I'm going to block the access so as you can see, I'm building out rule after rule after rule. I can also sit here and say if the threat service is medium and the user is in a certain AD group, for example, or I put in my user ID if it's a specific user ID, I can combine adaptive policies or adaptive rules with additional ones. So it's kind of an if then, then that type workflow. And I can move these around accordingly. And when it's all said and done, I can prompt for MFA or I could take advantage of device fingerprinting and say, hey, let's take a look to see if this user's ever authenticated on this before. So now that I've got all my different rule sets built, I've got them organized in a manner that makes sense for this policy. I click next. And this is where I can control the authentication workflow. So by default, it's username, password, and then MFA if required. But we've got passwordless workflows. We could do username, then MFA, then password. And we've got some token-based authentication methods. It's also within here that I can pick and choose subsets of my global MFA options. So I mentioned earlier, multi-factor authentication methods have been configured globally here. That's why some of these are grayed out because I don't allow them. But if I want to choose subsets, say I don't want to allow YubiKey at all on this one and I don't want to allow text, I simply uncheck these. So once I've completed that step, I hit next. And finally, I'm going to associate this policy to resources that I've integrated. Now, resources could be applications, it could be endpoints, it could be anything that I've got tied into SecureAuth. So I click Select Resources, and I'm going to choose my Box app, for example. So when I click Add, the next time a user goes and tries to authenticate into Box, they're going to follow that policy I just defined. It's going to determine what that authentication journey is going to look like for that user and whether or not they're going to get granted access into that application based upon those different adaptive checks that we've defined.